Well, hello YouTubers! Today our guest is one of the most creative skaters on Earth, Joey McGarry. Hello Joey! Hello! And now we're going to talk about studying equipment and mushroom blading, but let's start from history. You have skated over 20 years, uh, tell me about your starting point, how it looked like and what highlights do you remember throughout these years? I think I got my first pair of skates when I was around 10 or 11. I was a hockey player here in Canada. Hockey's really popular. And uh, the first time I saw skates, the idea of being able to do something like without a stick and without a team and just skating on concrete, it blew me away. And my mom rented me a set of skates because you could rent them back then. Mm. And uh I think I, I got hooked, but I didn't have a pair of skates. And then a year later, I got a pair of um, like 72 millimeter wheels, knockoff like Bauer or Ultra wheels or something like that. And that must have been, yeah, I don't know when I was 11 or 12 years old. And then I just got hooked on the feeling of skating because there was no team, no stick you had to hold and you could do it at just anywhere where there was pavement you didn't need a rink or anything um and then and then i saw i walked into a, a hockey shop and there was a video called mad beef and i would have been in grade seven so i don't know 12 or 13 at that point and i saw the guy that worked at the shop showed me dave kalash doing a 394 foot rail slide and uh I just remember being in the shop like what I've never seen anything like this before. And they had a wall of, um, of Kryptonics wheels and grind plates, the things that you would put on your skates to slide. So I, I had these hockey skates and I put the grind plates on and I got Kryptonics wheels and you could also rent these videos. So I rented mad beef. I got to see VG three, VG4 around that time. Um, and then at Whistler, I got a video called Hoax 2 and that, and it was, I was obsessed. So that was like my first introduction to it. And then, I mean, seeing my first Daily Bread magazine, I come from aggressive skating originally. Mm -hmm. um, but, but you also have experience with hockey player on, <laughs> on ice skates. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people from um, a lot of people in North America, a lot of people's stories of how they got into skating came from a lot of people came from hockey that they played hockey. Uh, I was the defenseman as well in hockey. So um, when you're a defenseman, you have to turn from forwards to backwards and backwards to forwards at really high speeds. And um, I always remember like there were, there were parents that, complimented my skating style in hockey like while i played <laughs> hockey so it i was naturally just a good skater and that part was really fun the game was fun and the team part was good but the freedom of of skating on the ice was one of my favorite parts i loved um going to the rink being the first person at the rink with no other people around and just skating by myself and that's something that i still do today like when i go to the skate park or or mm -hmm. go filming i love being skating on my own and um it's funny how those things like are related anyways yeah came from hockey discovered aggressive skating and was completely obsessed and i still am i'm so i skating is so fun yeah and the next question is uh, do you see difference between those times you started and nowadays what changed tricks speed variety speed of studying um the biggest thing right now is variety that um, you're starting to see like a lot of people who, who grew up with aggressive skating. Um, there's more people trying bigger wheels and there's, there's a variety of setups available for me, like discovering slalom skates. So discovering mm -hmm. Seba skates that had a rocker in them um, kind of like opened up the way I think about skating. Cause I would always, speed skate for fun like to not train but like stay in shape like i would aggressive skate at the park and speed skate and then leon came up with that 
the wizard frame and before that kind of got us into the slalom skates. And then it's kind of this like mishmash of styles now where I don't even know what to call your, you're on like a speed skate frame, but it's rockered. So it has slalom influence. Do you have some favorite riders, skaters? Um, I, it's probably like Leon comes to mind. Leon Bassin comes to mind. I really like him. Um, he, he's I really aggressive. like, no, have you seen his section in big wheels too? It's really uh, good. Uh, I don't remember, but he, his skill of in aggressive is bigger, bigger than yours and Todd, I think. Oh yeah. It looks like <laughs> big time, big time. He, he was not a fan of the weird style at first, but now he's weirder than both Todd and I. You got to see a section in Big Wheels too. I really like um, I really like Matthew Ledoux as well. Have you seen Matthew Ledoux? Parkour style skating. I, I, he did a, a wizard frame testing edit. Another one of my favorite skaters is uh, Danny Beer. Yeah, <laughs> also hockey player, <laughs> as I know. <laughs> Yes, he he takes he takes hockey and skiing and aggressive skating yeah. and mashes it all together into one style, and it's amazing. By the way, did you watch Sota? Screw the state of the art. Yeah, he he had my favorite part. Uh, how do you think will be aggressive skating the same in the future as is it now? Uh, what can be changed in better direction? I, I don't know. I think all of the stuff that I wanted to improve on aggressive skating is already happening. But there is one thing that I think could still happen that would help a lot for frame design, especially. And that's uh, right now there's UFS, which is the two mount yeah. where you mount your frame. There should be a, sec a UFS 2.0. So... Um, The mount points are almost like for a size nine foot. And if they came out a little bit, not only could you um, make better frames for big foot pe people, but the block that you could design, like design, frame designs are like, they're always stuck between, between you can this. have this, but you can't have the, the, the bolts, the where the yeah, yeah. bolts are positioned. You can only design a frame so many different ways before those bolts are going to get in the way. So if those bolts come out, the groove designs can improve and um, you can do different frame designs. But that's a whole, to change a frame standard is a, is a huge yeah, thing. But, so, But Powerslide already do it with, <laughs> with their two products. It's I own. Oh, yeah, they have, um, they just said QFS and <laughs> no frame mount at all and made a one piece boot. So that's the Aeon but, and that skate has been selling really well. How <laughs> long will they leave <laughs> this skate with uh, not detachable frames, sole plates? If it's a one piece skate, oh, it all depends. I think um, if you skate a lot of park, it can last a long time. But if you skate a lot of ledges and things, then it's not, not going to last very long. But so let's talk about people who want to start skating. For your opinion, which place is better for newbies to grow, street or skate park? I think it depends on what kind of skate they're using. I would say... We're talking about aggressive now. Oh, aggressive? Yeah. I would say skate park. If you're learning to aggressive skate... Yeah, I would say skate park. It's very important if you're starting to, to learn to aggressive skate to have a skate that's comfortable and rolls really easy. Um, don't start with anti-rocker. Skating's not going to feel good. If you don't have skaters community, how you can improve yourself, how to define your path, your or do you need to just skate and find out what you love more, love more? Hmm. I think, uh, I think the internet is really good for um, people learning to skate right now. There's quite a few videos and resources and things. And uh, if, if you're learning to skate, it's a really fun activity to do on your own in a just like put the headphones on and find a good place to skate and start playing around on them and messing around. And then you can start like looking up 
skating videos online and, and asking questions and stuff. I think I, yeah, that could just be based on my own experience of skating though, because I, in, there's not a lot of skaters in Canada and America. I mean, it's in Vancouver, there's people who skate recreationally and stuff, but we don't have like slalom meetups or competitions or, or it's more like um, a really small group of skaters that get together once in a while. So it, in, in the U S and Canada, it's a very, like sometimes a very solitary thing where you just do it on your own and find what you like in skating. But if that makes sense about skate parks, do they need to be empty or it doesn't matter how many people there? I pref I just prefer in an empty park. Cause I, how I said, I like to get to the rink when I was younger and be the only person there. For my experience of skating, I love the park to be empty. But there's some people that thrive off of um, the energy of a crowded skate park. But And uh, by the way, you live in Canada. Why the skate park where you skate in are always uh, empty? I get up very early in the morning to go skate. Not Not like, not early, but early, early. Like I get up when the sun comes up. It's almost like become a tradition or a ritual or something I, I love. Sometimes it's before work too, but even on the weekends, I love, I love going right when the sun comes up. I don't know. It feels very special <laughs> if so you go when the sun comes up. You have so much energy to, to skate and then go work. <laughs> oh, well, it puts you in the best mood. It's almost like it doesn't even matter what the work day is like, especially in the summer when you can get up at, 4 30 in the morning you don't have to be at work until nine so you have like you can skate the park for an hour or two hours before work and you're just in the best mood and let's talk about what are the most dangerous obstacles in the skate park and tricks you can do on it dropping into to transition is dangerous for for a new person and also like i slide on my wheels without even aggressive skates, like I'll slide on my wheels on a rail or something and you could seriously mess yourself up because yeah, urethane sticks on rails. So there's really cool stuff that you can do with like when the wheels make a, they like a squeak sound and they stick and you can like do a half slide on a rail, but then stick and do a spin stuff like that, I guess. <laughs> and next question, what is more painful? jumps or grinds how often do you make mistakes i would say grinds are because it, when you miss a grind your leg hits the ground you're you're jarring your joints kind of and jumps you can learn to jump in a way where you really absorb the impact more so i would say grinds for sure you miss coping and you hit your hip or you just miss a, a simple soul sometimes your your hip is your hip joint is hitting or your knee joint. Yeah. I'm way more sore after grinding sessions than air sessions. Although if you go really big and do like a big 540 straight to flat and you don't absorb it enough, your lower back can hurt, but grinds for sure. Okay. If you can't do something while learning, what should you do in such situations? Uh, try to learn other tricks or enjoy doing something that you already can do. I don't like missing tricks <laughs> or not getting tricks. So I just usually do stuff I know I can, I can do. And then once in a while, depending on the day, uh, I might try something new, but I, it could be that I'm, I'm older now, like I'm 35. So I love, you can get into a, f into a flow faster. If you do stuff, you know, you can do. And then maybe if you're really warmed up and your body's feeling good, you can try something new, but. And there's things that I used to be able to do when I was younger that I can pull out, but it needs to be on a day where I really feel. So I don't try many new tricks, no. <laughs> Moving straight to maybe one of the most interesting part, mushroom blading. So the questions are, can you define what mushroom blading is? And do you know who are those people which invented this style and how? Uh, Mushroom blading was coined by Andy Cruz, 
famous skater from Atlanta. He was very creative. He did a lot of roles. Uh, he came also, um, him and Tom Heiser, Frankie Laschiava was one of their buddies, but Tom Heiser and Andy Cruz were very creative skaters. He had a joke that um, mushroom blading, any weird tricks that looked like someone was under the influence of psilocybin mushrooms, it was like a joke. There, he said there was also like heroin blading and peyote blading. He just had jokes, but mushroom blading stuck for some reason. I don't know where the mushroom blading how it got out, but it, it got attached to people like Nick Riggle and later um, Dustin Latimer. There's lots of people over time who kind of had, it just kind of was a name for any weird style or weird trick. And then it was, we made a video called Better Than Baseball. And we were thinking of our next video title. And there's a guy, um, Ryan from Detroit, who posted a Nick Riggle section. This was like in 2006. And he had this little write up that um, mushroom blading is done by Nick Riggle and Dustin Latimer and SOL, which people thought that that's what our crew was called SOL. And then it kind of clicked. And we were like, we should make a video called mushroom blading. Our next video should be called mushroom blading because it's like a really good name when people watch that video, they will be expecting weird skating like that. And then the idea was to make 10 mushroom blading videos, which we have now. And then that's it. It's just a really good name that sticks. And I think it's, it, I don't know, it represents more now than what it did when we first made the video, but it's just a cool name, really. The idea that you can take your skates and just do interesting stuff on them, I don't know. Or it doesn't have to be weird. You can just go to a tennis court and start messing around with movement is kind of what it is now. And and with that, there's people doing that idea way better than we ever could. Like even what what the wizard, or what the Leon's doing on the wizards and Colin. And I, it's the name doesn't really mean anything anymore except for like the logo and it's kind of stuck. But what people are doing with Creative skating is amazing these days. On aggressive, on wizards, on big wheels. For whom is this? How many hours people should spend to start doing such things? And what feelings they can expect? If you have a pair of skates and a spot to go skate, you ask yourself, okay, what can I do on these things? And it's not... Um, it's not what do I think I should do on these things. It's what can I do on these things? And I'm obsessed with skiing lately because skiers do a really good job of like, okay, we have these long planks and these boots. What can we do? What can we do with our equipment? And um, I really like when people, Danny Beer is like, you watch him skate or you watch Leon skate sometimes. And there's people who do things that you would never think of doing when you look at an object or something like the things that Leon can do on just flat ground. Like how did he come up with that? Or it, it's about that, you know, like it's yeah. how does skating feel to you? What do you want to do on your skates? That's what it's, I, that's, that's maybe what mushroom blading is. I don't know. What can you do on your skates? Base basics are important. Just like, getting a feel for the skates and getting a feel for like one grind or two grinds is really important. And, uh, soul grind it's, yeah, it's so bizarre that you'll just, you'll just do it enough until you get a feeling of like, not, not the right way to do a soul grind, but the way you do a soul grind, like the way when you think about how a soul grind feels in your head, because there is different ways of balancing it and doing it. You'll eventually just learn like your version. They'll still be like the stance will be the same, but it, it's always a little bit different on how people lean over. You'll just have a feel for the soul grind. Don't, don't force yourself to learn it too quickly. A really important thing for learning grinds is going to like, um, a ledge that's not too high. That's nice. And it's about like me. maybe a little bit of a jump to it. Yeah, and that slides nice. And if you just keep going back to that same spot, just like 
doing circles and keep practicing the grind or, you know, yeah. I, it's funny because people think that, um, skating is easy, but skating looks easy, but it's hard to make look good and it's easy to make look bad. <laughs> Do you have haters? It's not my question, it's a question from my mate. Yeah, of course. But uh, it's, I think it's more just, um, it's people who don't like a certain style of skating. There's, it's just people who don't agree with uh, using so, inline skates in this way. Yeah, yeah. Or, or using inline skates in general. There are, there's people who I cannot believe that this person is doing a different activity than the one I prefer. Can you believe that people do different activities? This is making me so angry that I am going to type up something right now to this person about how I do not approve of the activity that they're doing. They should do the activity that I do. I have watched a lot of your videos and uh, they're always more than just one trick. It's like a, a complex performance. Did you practice separately slalom, jumps, slides, and grinds, or all in the same time? Probably separate, because um, I came from hockey, then I had rec skates, and then I had aggressive skates, and then I would speed skate in my spare time while aggressive skating, and then I discovered slalom skates, And then Leon made this frame that took speed skating and slalom, but then I wanted to aggressive skate on that setup. So it's just like a crazy mishmash of all different styles. And I think the more kinds of skates that you try and the more different sizes of wheels and different types of frames and different types of boots, it's it all feeds into the same. You'll eventually find the one that you prefer, like your style that I'm not, a, I'm not amazing on aggressive skates, so I don't do it as much, that I really like 100 millimeter wheels rockered is like, that's my favorite thing to skate. One, If I had to just take one setup right now, it would be 100 millimeter wheels rockered, wizard frame. Yeah, and uh, how many martial bladers are now in the world? Uh, I don't know, hundreds. <laughs> Do you recommend it for other skaters? And what background do they need? I think the most important thing is like finding a skate set that's really comfortable and fun to roll around on before anything else. And that's uh, why I think rocker setups um, or a slalom skate is really fun as an introductory setup. Some slalom skates are a little bit too wobbly at high speeds. So the reason that the wizard frame is so amazing is the rocker is just subtle enough and the frame is longer, so it's stable. And it it's really cool for me personally because I got kind of got to access things I've wanted to do. And I think if somebody finds a skate that they really like, and they just start skating around in them, they might discover things that they want to do quicker instead of focusing on an object or, or things to practice that like it, skiing's the same way as like finding really good equipment will inspire the tricks or things that you want to skate. So it's, it doesn't really answer the question, but it's more, you have to start at a place where your equipment feels really good. Yeah. 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 Uh, would you like to make tutorials with mushroom blade and tricks? Maybe not even tutorials, but information how long you will teach those tricks and to uh, show them separately in slow motion, or this is not necessary? Uh, yeah, we want, well, we did two how to's. Todd did uh, heel spins and I did swivels, and we wanted to film a whole bunch, but it's just time. Like, we're always. Um, When we do have spare time, we're filming for other video projects. There's a huge list of stuff, like even just the idea of, of learning a, a hockey stop or a wheel slide. You know, right now is um, Sean Unwin on the shop, do you, the shop task channel. Um, I'll have to, I'll have to send it to you, but Sean's starting yeah. to do tutorials on hockey stop. What tricks do you make 
you happy? Grinds, swivels, jumps, or slides? Wheel slides, probably. Ooh, actually, maybe I might have to say jumps, actually, by, by just a, a little bit. Because jumps, you can just go extremely fast and flow around a park, which is one of the best feelings ever. And I'm not very good at doing spins and things like that. I have a couple, but I, just going around a park fast and doing jumps. 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 <laughs> Okay, I have seen that you can do Misty Flip. Uh, why do you avoid it in new videos? And uh, what about Stale Grab? Is it unstylish one? Well, Stale Grab, I, I do do Stale Grab, but I do it the Dustin Latimer way, which is I keep, I keep my feet really tight together. Um, I don't normally do... There's like the Stale Grab where your feet are close together, and then there's the Stale Grab where it's kind of like wider leg. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I don't do that one just because of something about the way I like my skating to look or feel. I like to keep my feet pretty close together. I always wonder if that's why I really prefer the way skiers keep their feet very close together for airs and things like that. There's some tricks where my feet, but no, I don't normally do. I don't know why. Maybe I'll try a stale grab. I'm also really tall. So I'm six feet, 180 three centimeters i am 197 <laughs> holy crap yeah. so you're six one you're quite tall then don't don't do uh don't worry about doing stale grabs then just just uh do airs and keep your feet close together don't even worry about the grab just yeah. worry about the feel and uh um misty flips i've tried i think five times and landed two of them so i'm so happy with my record of landing two out of five that I haven't I'm happy with my record that's my answer yeah. but I you know maybe I'll try one uh, how often do you create new tricks or lines maybe once or twice every session there's something kind of new not for for aggressive skating not so much but for um combination for big for big wheels and 100 millimeter wheels and there's new movements yeah there's always new stuff to to try on those definitely I know that your favorite wheels are 60 millimeters for aggressive and 100 for mushroom. So which one you love more, big or small, and why? Ooh, that's a tough one. Currently, this moment in time, uh, 100 millimeter because I can, it's like a direct connection into that fun skating. 60 millimeter is more hit or miss that I can have bad sessions if I miss a bunch of grinds or if I'm not completely warmed up or the body isn't feeling good. So 100 millimeter this moment in time. But I have had some really, really fun grinding sessions. So I still have got to give the smaller wheels props. Both are good. I, I think everybody should have both setups because both are really fun. <clears throat> If I get it right, you prefer K2 skates and long frames. Why? And to what pairs of skates do you have? My favorite setup is the Wizard setup. I use I use a little bit of everything right now. I switch between Seba and K2. I mostly skate the Seba gutted boot, like um, linerless with Seba intuition liners, Wizard frame, and 100 millimeter wheels. Um, but I do use the K2 unnatural boot as well because it's it's pretty stiff and supportive so i use that with 100 millimeter wheels um i like both have really different feels so that's why i switch back and forth mm -hmm. like the k2 you can get super tight at the top whereas the seba has a little bit more forward flex and carbon has is a little bit more responsive aggressive mostly k2 how oh. often you have problems that? with equipment uh, what is more unstable on the fr boot the seba fr like the slalom boot the I have. the the bolts would come loose on the bottom sometimes like if you mm -hmm. did sterides or skated rougher cement that the frame would move on the bottom that was the last one that i could think of rougher cement the cuff bolts come loose you gotta you gotta do up the cuff bolts mm -hmm. um that's everything, though. Uh, you don't support idea of three wheels and want five or even six wheel frames. But what about weight and maneuverability? About stairs, step overs, 
or you just on that level when you need a long base to be like on skis yeah i i'm more interested in having frame length um for what you could do with your with your body for leaning forward and back crossovers now that i'm finding kind of like my own style i'm not too worried about catching on crossovers and uh yeah three wheels i think for racing they're really they're breaking records obviously or for straight skating on a path i can see it but they're it's too short and too high off the ground and i i like the idea of what you can do with human movement if the frames got longer because you watch skiing and they can ollie off the front mm -hmm. and all in terms of slides and things that you could do on skates and movements i'm i want somebody to make five and six wheel frames but <laughs> like tips and tails if you think of of skates having tips and tails that you you could not just jump straight up but you could jump off your toes more or off the front and off the back and things like um style for stair rides and slides and just even the stability of them so when you land certain airs and things like that you could go more back seat or thinking of like doing a super stylish 540 and leaning more forward on the landing i think just style wise the way that you could place your weight forward or back uh, have you ever had problems with wheels and uh... As I know, now you have your own wheels from Undercover brand. How good they are? They're pretty much, they feel exactly the same as Rollerblade Hydrogen, the, the first Rollerblade Hydrogen wheels did, because um, the core is different on Hydrogens now. So Hydrogens were pretty soft, um, super fast, easy to slide in. 85, it was a tribute to Face Wheels, which was Andy Cruz and Tom Heiser back in the day, a wheel company for K2. Those Face Wheels were 85. And so the green color and the 85A is like a tribute to the people who came up with the words mushroom blading. And um, for problems for wheels, no, not any huge problems, especially if they're on wizard frames because the, the rocker is so subtle that it distributes the pressure quite evenly. Uh, can you tell me more about wizard frames? And uh, this is not my question. What make them special and four hundred dollars? <laughs> they're made out of a they're machined out of a solid block of aluminum by a a machinist who is a wizard. He makes uh he made BMW parts and he also makes uh, roller skating stuff. So they're made in really small runs, and um, there are people who are like. I could make that frame, but nobody has yet. And I think a couple of people have tried and it looked really crappy. So <laughs> it costs a lot to get that wizard to take a solid block of aluminum machine. And if you actually get to try them or see how the bolts screw in or just hold them in your hand, they're like, I haven't broken them or bent them or I'm using the same bolts. They're super high quality. Um, the dimensions of them, they have a little bit of a heat lift. You have to imagine the third wheel is touching the most and then the back two wheels are a little bit higher and the front is a little bit up and they almost like with the heel lift your own puts you in a forward skate so you have to imagine on a non-rockered setup when you have four wheels brand new wheels touching and your your wheels are broken in perfectly skates feel really good that your wheels are like completely at the perfect point that's what was wizard frames are having brand new wheels but they feel like you've been skating on them the way that like the way that the rocker is it feels like a perfectly broken in flat setup it costs a lot to get something machined out of a solid block of aluminum and he can only do small runs mm -hmm. so if he was to get an extrusion and people were buying them all the time then the price would go down i would say this current version is perfect for the average skater somebody who like their introduction to it Some people might not like the heel lift but for new skaters or people trying skates for the first time it puts you in a better position so they're really good they're, <laughs> they change the way i skate so for me it's like 
all skates need to be with rock ring because it's allow you to maneuver and it's hard when you newbie and your leg goes here and this goes here and you can't move them together to make straight move yeah totally that's I, why I, ice skates is more practical for newbies to start rocker is ice skating because they are rockered yeah totally yeah i i remember um saying to the the engineer at k2 that if like all recreational skates were slightly rockered it would make skating easier and more fun for people getting into it because even my wife when i watch her try skates and yeah you see legs starting to go in two different directions and they're stuck kind of on rockering makes those like minor adjustments so much easier and there's like for beginners it's just it feels better but i mean it'll take a while for rocker to really catch on but just rocker caught on in the ski industry like so many skis are rockered now because skiing was the same way people would get stuck mm -hmm. in a track and it was hard to initiate a turn I highly recommend to viewers to watch all the videos on Mushroom Blading channel because uh, you always can find something new. And maybe you have some words for our viewers. Uh, Get a setup that is very comfortable and feels good. And um, put, in, put in some headphones and listen to music and skate around and try and do it in the morning. And it's, it's honestly one of the best things you can do for your life you'll feel like a god <laughs> i don't know if that's good advice or not but it makes me feel really good